In this video, I will explain functional differentiation. This means how to derive a functional. We consider a functional uppercase f of a function lowercase f of x. Its functional derivative with respect to the function lowercase f is written with a delta instead of a d. This helps to distinguish the functional derivative from the derivative of a function. Here you see the functional derivative at a function lowercase f naught of x prime. The argument of the derivative can be written either in the denominator or to the right of the derivative. This is similar as for derivatives of functions. An important property of functional differentiation is that it makes functionals to functions. If a functional is derived with respect to a function f of x prime, the functional derivative is a function of x prime. The notation for higher order functional derivatives is analogous to the notation for higher order derivatives of functions. A functional derivative of order n is a function with n arguments. In all expressions shown here, the variable x can be a vector. We will now see how a functional derivative can be defined. When you want to derive a function f of x at a certain position x0, you need to determine the slope of the function at x0. This is equivalent to determining the slope of the tangent of the function at x0. The derivative at x0 can be defined by a difference quotient whose step size age becomes infinitesimally small. For a functional derivative, one can imagine a similar procedure. Now we have a functional uppercase f of a function lowercase f, and we want to determine the derivative of the functional at a function lowercase f naught. The functional derivative determines how fast the value which the functional returns changes when the function in the functional's argument is varied. Instead of a step size age, we now add a function to the function lowercase f naught to vary it. Here, the added function is epsilon times Kronecker delta of x minus x prime. A definition for the functional derivative is shown below the right plot. The functional derivative is defined by an infinitesimal difference quotient. The definition is thus analogous to the definition of the derivative of a function. However, the right plot is just a sketch to provide an illustration of a functional derivative. In fact, it is unclear what the horizontal axis for the functions means. The problem is that there is not a clear ordering for functions as it exists for the real numbers. Furthermore, the definition for the functional derivative shown here is illustrative, but not mathematically rigorous. We will therefore now consider a rigorous definition of the functional derivative. In mathematics, one starts with the functional differential delta f. This is the variation of the functional f. This functional differential is defined as the integral over the product of the functional derivative of the functional f and a test function phi. Here, we have the wanted functional derivative of the functional uppercase f. Since this functional derivative with respect to f of x prime is a function of x prime, the integral over x prime is reasonable. The test function phi is an arbitrary function. It can be understood as a variation delta f of x prime. This interpretation helps to see that the functional differential is similar to a total differential of a function. The expression in the second line of the equation is the directional derivative of the functional at the function lowercase f of x in the direction of phi of x. The definition of the expression in the second line is given in the third line of the equation. The directional derivative is defined as the ordinary derivative of the functional with respect to epsilon at epsilon equals zero. Here the functional is considered at f plus epsilon times phi. The equation given by lines two and three defines the functional derivative in a mathematically rigorous way. Epsilon times phi is here a so-called variation of the function f. The ordinary derivative with respect to epsilon is as usual defined by a difference quotient. Let us choose a Kronecker delta function of x minus x prime as test function phi. However, from a mathematical point of view, lines 2 and 4 of the equation then result in the non-rigorous definition of the functional derivative that we saw on the previous slide.
For the practical calculation of functional derivatives, there exist helpful rules. These calculation rules are similar to the calculation rules for the differentiation of functions. The first rule is the most important one. It states that the functional derivative of a function f of x with respect to f of x prime equals the Kronecker delta function of x minus x prime. When a function f is derived with respect to an independent function g, the result is zero. The second rule states the linearity of a functional derivative. The functional derivative of a times a functional f plus b times a functional g yields a times the functional derivative of f plus b times the functional derivative of g. The third rule is the chain rule. We consider the situation that a functional uppercase f is a functional of a functional g and that g is a functional of a function lowercase f. The functional derivative of uppercase f with respect to lowercase f is now the functional derivative of uppercase f with respect to g times the functional derivative of uppercase g with respect to lowercase f. For uppercase f being a functional of g, g must depend on a variable y directly. It cannot be a pure functional of lowercase f. The functional derivative of uppercase f with respect to g thus yields a function of y. Therefore, the product of the functional derivatives is integrated over y. In the special case that the functional uppercase f depends on a function g, that is a function of the function lowercase f, the chain rule simplifies. Now there is no longer an integral. The functional derivative of uppercase f with respect to lowercase f is now the product of the functional derivative of uppercase f with respect to g and the ordinary derivative of the function g with respect to the function lowercase f. Finally, the fourth rule is the product rule. It states that the functional derivative of the product of functionals f and g is f times the functional derivative of g plus g times the functional derivative of f. We now demonstrate the calculation of a functional derivative by examples. In the first example, we apply the basic definition of a functional derivative. We consider a functional that is an integral of a function g over x. This function depends on x, a function f of x, and its derivative f prime of x. Now we use the basic definition of a functional derivative. Next, we insert the definition of the considered functional into the right-hand side. The derivative with respect to epsilon and the integral can be interchanged. We apply the chain rule for the differentiation of a function to the integrand. The red contributions can be omitted. In the derivatives with respect to epsilon, we cannot simply set epsilon to zero but we can easily carry out these derivatives. The replacement of epsilon by zero can now be omitted since no term depends on epsilon anymore. In the last term, the derivative acting on phi can be shifted by applying the product rule of differentiation. The first term in the last line can be discarded when we assume that phi vanishes on the boundary of the region of integration. The functions phi can be placed outside of the brackets. In the two lowest lines, we rename the integration variable x as x prime. The lowest two lines can then easier be compared with the first line of the equation. We now perform this comparison. Since phi is an arbitrary function, the green terms must be equal. This yields an expression for the wanted functional derivative of the functional f. In our second example, now we will use the calculation rules to derive the same functional derivative as before. We start by applying the functional derivative to the expression for the functional. Next. 
We move the functional derivative past the integral sign. Afterwards, we apply the chain rule to the functional derivative in the integrand. The integrand splits then into two terms. In the left term, we replace the functional derivative of f of x with respect to f of x prime by Kronecker delta of x minus x prime. In the right term, we write the derivative of f with respect to x by a differential operator. The functional derivative and the ordinary differential operator are interchanged on the right. Then we can again replace the functional derivative of f with respect to f by a Kronecker delta. The differential operator acting on the Kronecker delta is shifted to the previous factor of the term. For this purpose, it is taken into account that the Kronecker delta function vanishes at the boundary of the integration domain. Since a Kronecker delta is in each term of the integrand, the integral can now easily be carried out. This yields the wanted result. It is the same result as the one we derived before, but now we obtained it in a simpler way. Based on functional derivatives, it is possible to define a functional Taylor expansion. A functional Taylor expansion is similar to an ordinary Taylor expansion. It allows to expand a functional about a certain function, which is here the function lowercase f of x. The deviation from this function is the function epsilon of x. The zeroth order contribution to the functional Taylor expansion of the functional f about the function f is simply the functional at the function f. The first order term of the expansion is an integral over the first order functional derivative of the functional times the deviation epsilon. The second order contribution has two integrals and a second order functional derivative, and so on. Functional differentiation is highly important for the calculus of variations. This is a field of mathematics where the function in the argument of a functional is varied to find minima and maxima of the functional. The calculus of variations will be explained in a separate video in more detail.